Well, rather amazingly, uh, I was actually asked by the American Air Force, this was just before NASA, actually, just before, to work on the moon landing, which, of course, occurred in 1969. So this would have been in the sort of mid-60s, a little bit later than that. And as the laboratory was being built in the new wing of the building, I had the opportunity of building a simple space simulator into the laboratory, into the building, you see. And so we made um, a sort of electric railway which ran right uh, along the building, basically, in, through my laboratory, uh, with a, a little carriage on it that you could sit on and you were carried along. And then I had visual displays which changed their size as the carriage drew you towards or away from it. In other words, if you would draw nearer to it, the display would shrink, and as you were moved further back from it, it expanded. And one of the tricks was to make it apparently the same size as it looked as you went nearer or further from it. And that amount that it had to change was a measure of what we call size constancy, constancy scaling. And it had a vague sort of relevance, you know, to space travel, particularly docking. Uh, how do you dock in space? Now, the problem with docking is there's so little information available. You've got a black void of space. You've got a few specks of stars at infinity. You don't have perspective. You don't have things getting dimmer. You don't more blurred with distance as you get on Earth. In other words, the visual cues, as we say, or clues, were absent as in space, and so we had to predict what would happen to astronauts when they were docking or landing on the moon from experiments like this, this is what I was trying to do. At the same time, I was trying to learn about vision, about how it worked normally in these situations, because I could control them. So there was a two-edged sword, you see, which was great fun. So we had, it was a bit sort of boy's own stuff, you know, space going into the moon and all that sort of stuff. At the same time, it actually had some science to it, the back of it. It was also very good for visitors. They used to love riding on this thing. Great fun. <laughs> so he combined everything. They made me a colonel, actually. I was a, an honorary colonel in America. I didn't have a uniform, but I had a piece of paper saying I was a colonel. And quite honestly, I waved this about. It was incredible. I could get onto an aeroplane that was full. I could travel for nothing anywhere, stay in any mess in the States, Navy or the Army or anything, you know, uh, for free. It, it, being a colonel is incredible. Mm -hmm.